We live in uncertain times. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. This is Next Biz Success. This is the just-in-time training network for entrepreneurs who need to succeed. Today we're discussing the economic crisis, the impact it's having on the typical small business person, even the aspiring entrepreneur who's just gotten started. It's a difficult time for everybody, but especially the small business person. And you know, a lot of us don't even realize the role, the importance that a legal professional, the right attorney, can play when we're pulled and pushed with cash flow and different, uh, different forms of, of uh, financial pressure. So that's why I'm so happy to have my guest here today, Sherry Wartman. How are you, Sherry? Good. Good. You're obviously with McHenry Hazard, Hanson, Roth & Hupp in the Lincoln, Nebraska area. That's right. Right? And you counsel lots of small business people. And especially now, there's a lot of emotion out there, a lot of uncertainty, and a lot of fear. That's right. So we're talking today about recessionary strategies that involve legal intervention and the assistance of people like you. Yes. Yes. What well, I'd like to ask you, if you do a little role playing with me okay. today, and uh, let's pretend, for instance, that uh, uh, I'm a small business person and I have a lot of customers who owe me money, and because of economic pressure overall, they're unable to pay their bill to me. What What do I do? When do I call a legal professional, and what impact does that really have on the situation? Well, I would say first try to work with your customers on a proactive basis um, and, and whatever you can live with for payment arrangements or they can live with for payment arrangements. And if that doesn't work, then you need to visit with your attorney about possible uh, collection. And that can start out with just a collection letter that follows the, the okay. law. A collection letter. And um, or it can lead all the way to a lawsuit when which your attorney can help you in assisting you to obtain a judgment against your customer, essentially. Okay, okay. And by the way, Sherry, when, when you obtain a judgment against a customer, what does that really mean? Uh, you're taking assets then from them, or what, what happens? Well, a judgment is uh, the tool that allows you to be able to access assets if they're available. For example, a judgment allows you to garnish wages, um, if there are wages, or to um, collect assets, um, uh, Take money out of a checking account yes. or, or tangible assets That's of some right. sort. Okay, right. so it can go to it can go all the way to that extent, huh? It can, and you just need to make some um, cost decisions with your attorney about whether it's worth pursuing or not. Um, but that's something you can talk to your attorney. Sure, about. sure, because the cost of the attorney might actually exceed possibly the cost of the money that's owed to you, or even or, or not. I mean, right, and it can sometimes even if it doesn't, is that person going to be able to pay it anyway? Right. Is there, are there any assets because out Because so there? often you don't necessarily get it back, or right. at least all of it, do you? Right. Okay. Now, should we flip the tables? Sure. All right. Let's pretend that uh, uh, I'm a small business person and uh, I can't pay my supplier. If I'm buying yeah. product and putting it on the shelves for resale or retail, uh, I can't, I can't uh, do that. And if they shut me off, uh, I'm essentially out of business or any other creditors. What role does an attorney play under those very tough circumstances? Well, uh, it depends. Hopefully, um, y as a business owner, you can try to proactively uh, work with your suppliers or whatever creditors you're dealing with okay. on payment arrangements. Right. The, the main thing is don't just curl up in a ball and, and, ignore, and ignore what's happening. Yeah. Be proactive. It's when so you see easy it. to do. Though, it is, and you see it all the time. Yeah, you just don't know exactly what to do, and you may not have a, a handy dandy attorney like Sherry Wortman. <laughs> Uh, on your Rolodex, yeah? That's right. All right, that's right. Now listen, let's just pretend for a second that uh, things are just really uh, overwhelming, all right? And the business is struggling and this has maybe gone on for some time. And so you're going to make a personal and a strategic decision to dissolve your business. Okay. Now we're in a tough situation. Mm -hmm. What role does the attorney play then? What, what, what do you do? So many people just lock the door and walk away, you know? Right. What happens? Well, there's a couple things. First of all, if you have if you're sure you've taken all the steps that you can take before you get to that point, there may be some additional things you can do. For example, you could maybe renegotiate your lease um, if you're under a commercial lease to a lower, more attractive payment that allows your business to continue if okay. that's what you want. And you know what, I appreciate you saying that because there's, many times there's more hope and right. more options than people really think. Right, And right. it's so nice to have an attorney bring this up. So sometimes 
we never know what, what's going to happen when we get an attorney involved. And I, re I really appreciate you bringing up those extra choices. We may be, we have more legs than we realize. Right. Yeah, but continue. And, and sometimes you can work with suppliers similarly, maybe enter into a new contract with your supplier that uh, maybe isn't as favorable as you had before, right. but it's not something that you're having to pay cash every time they come if, it, if you don't have the cash flow at this time. Um, but if, if you get to the point where you do need to dissolve and close your doors, yes. um, there are certain legal procedures depending on the type of business structure or entity that you have for dissolving, which can include filings with the Secretary of State, right. publications uh, in the newspaper to let creditors know that you're dissolving. Okay. An important thing for businesses to remember is a lot of times they've signed personal guarantees of their personal liability uh, oh, for their business. Wow. Well, that's, you just opened up a new dimension mm -hmm. to this dialogue. I mean, I'm sure people are going, oh my gosh, did we sign over something personal? And sometimes people forget that they did that, yes, actually. Yes. And what are the implications there? Then they decide to not dissolve or, or they really have to go to a bankruptcy attorney? Or what, 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 what's the story then? Well, it, you want to use um, any negotiation power you have in, as part of your dissolution to have all of those business debts taken care of as part of your dissolution process. And if that's not going to work, your business attorney or corporate attorney uh, should refer you to a bankruptcy attorney, at least for a consultation to see if that would be in your best financial interest. So are bankruptcy attorneys separate from a corporate attorney or a small business attorney? Are they? Do they have to be different or can they be the same? Sometimes they're the same. Yeah. It, it just really depends. Uh, attorneys are uh, most of the time general practitioners, but attorneys have their areas of focus that yes. they practice in. Yes. And um, most of the time attorneys who practice in the area of bankruptcy really have a strong focus in bankruptcy and it would make sense to see an attorney who has most of their or a significant amount of their practice in bankruptcy. Okay, yeah, because it's kind of a specialty and yes. the laws change a little bit for yes. different people and so on. Let me just wrap up this uh, uh, dialogue with, uh, with you, Sherry, by asking you, you know, in this crazy time, the sea change that mm -hmm. we're all experiencing, some small businesses need to find an attorney. They just don't have a relationship with a legal professional. Uh, what, what's the best way to find somebody who can really provide the uh, assistance that you need and probably uh, uh, would really appreciate under the circumstances? What's the typical way to find an attorney? Well, I would say referral is the best way to find a legal professional as well as other professionals uh, that businesses need. And talk to your banker or uh, anyone, your accountant. Um, Good idea. Other business owners and see who they use and what their experience was because the referral, in my opinion, is the best way to obtain good uh, professional advice. Terrific. Well, Sherry Wortman from McHenry, Hazard, Hanson, Roth, and Hupp in Lincoln, Nebraska. I appreciate your insight. This is tough times, yes. and I feel more confident just talking with you. So <laughs> thank you so much for your assistance. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. This is Next Biz Success. Make sure that you get a legal professional on your side, especially during recessionary pressure. Thanks again for watching.